we are live at twitch.tv slash CEO Gaming in Orlando, Florida. Gathered here today, anime fills the air. It could only mean one thing. CEO Taku 2022. Welcome to the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle North America versus Asia Exhibition. I am so hyped for this. All the players have been hyped for this all week long, and it's finally come for the time to establish who's the best. Yeah. What's up, what's good, Kraken? My name is Kraken I because I'm joined with the one, the only, the Bojack. Bojack. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, I'm so excited for this. This has been a long discussed thing in the BB Tag community. And obviously, with, you know, like COVID going on, we didn't really, like, we had a large separation of, like, just the, the Japanese scene, the EU scene, and the NA scene. Just everybody had their own killers. Who's the top tiers? Who's all this? And everybody's like, oh, dude, NA's, like, the ridiculous. We're the best. Or, Japan's like, you guys are, like, not, not, you aren't. You're not that hot. Yeah. <laughs> EU, they said some words, too. But all in things together, like, everybody's wondering, who is the top dogs? Like, we've seen the likes of just, like, Monkey, Chop Suey, Fave Scrub, and, the, like, the rest of the team, right? Yo Game Wizard, Razo, Dante for the NA side of it. Like, they have been just doing work and just time after time presenting some of the best BB tag NA has to offer. But what about the, the Asian team, Kraken Hackens? What, yeah. what we got going on there? Yeah, I mean, on the Asia team, we've had a taste, all right? Elon New 13 of Korea, they were the CEO 2021 Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Champion in a dominant fashion. But the question is, what about the rest of Asia? Japan's finest has pulled up and they are trying to make a statement. We got Nezu, Hashimo, Pikachu, Neo Grandson, and Watamasa representing the Asia side. It's, it's, it's only killers. Only killers out here for the 6v6. <laughs> like, there are so many good, like, Japanese players that could, like, possibly come out. And obviously, we had a couple others show up, but, like, we have to, you know, time is a, is a valuable asset. We only have a few hours to do this. So right. we need to get through this. We picked some of the six best. And honestly, like, so we've been playing casuals for a lot with the Japanese players, and they have just, like, every set has just been a nail-biter close one. Like, I... They asked us who, what's the the predicted amount of like games you think, and it's like, at thirteen. Yeah, basically. Like, it's gonna go down to the wire. Maybe we'll find out right in here, right now. But we're gonna start right now. This is a blind pick system. It is first to two. So as each team goes up, each player will hop off after the winner. Right now, we're gonna have the first game of the, the sets, which is gonna be Yo Game Wizard, gonna be rocking the Yumi Adachi versus Lon, rocking the Hilda New. This is gonna be a run back from CEO. Let's see how he does right now. I'll see, see Yo Game Wizard trying to establish that Adachi unique full screen presence by Elon. Taking the fight over, gonna be landing the overhead, getting the first point of momentum. Yeah, just finding, that's one thing I really like about Elon's gameplay, is just using that 6B and running forward, but Game Wizard finding the opening. Woo! And the cross combo off of the 5B to get things started, spinning a little bar, and now the gravity walls don't matter when I got that 4P on deck. I gotta use all the Rekkas and get this corner. Yeah, you can see Elon desperately trying to just make sense of that cross combo. They're just caught in so much unburstable damage here. Yo Game Wizard catching it for all it's worth. Command throw in there just so you know it's real. Yeah, that all unburstable is very close. The wake up super, but that is going to be a dead new. But Lon has made the solo Hilda comebacks time and time again. That JB is going to be recoverable, all the full recovery, all the way to the floor. And whipping two of them, not Ooh. a good start. Lon is going crazy, dude. For real, this is just a super, like, Fast pace of that we have going on here on both sides. You see Elon trying to mount a comeback with this resonance place activation, a little bit of chip, but the Adachi is blocking everything, gets the low off the corner lockdown. Yeah, this is just going to be optimal combos from Game Wizard. The, the, what he's known for really, going to set the BZ09. Oh, that, oh oh, that is God. so smart. How is Jimmy this smart? The unseen low is the deadliest. If there's a bees here behind me, no way you know what's coming after this record. Yo, Game Wizard strikes blood first with the first game. And there was a little bit of like a smirk on Yo, Game Wizard's face when these two were coming up. Well, okay, <laughs> after doing that, after doing what he just did there, because the typical thing you're going to see whenever it comes down to the Yumi Adachi team is going to be the BZ Odine act to switch it to the Yumi. The BZ Odine is going to present that meaty. You're going to get like three seconds to run a mix up. Usually it's a jump and then an air dash, and then just however many overheads you want to do that you can fit in there and going for a low, right? Right. What he decided to do instead was use Yumi's Grounded Rekka series, which has a overhead and a low option, and you cannot see that yes. with <laughs> the giant laser covering him up. So now, I do believe we have a team change, or at least they went back to characters like just to make sure that 
everything was fresh. Uh, there was a team change, actually. Wow. Juan is breaking up the Batista. Helda was not doing it for him that first game. And said, that's going to be my final character. The B Zeodine does come out now, and the mix-up starts. And just Ooh. like that, like mentioned, got hit by the first overhead. And going to be like 6k damage here. Pretty good. Yeah, this is all your game. Which is just looking to carry that momentum. Gets the cross-up overhead. Elon first reverse. Yeah, fantastic push from Elon. And now just trading your projectiles, my projectiles. It's a whole lot of zoning right now. <laughs> 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 Yo, a DP for your DP, the invincibility trade. The wrong assist, though. And now gonna be able to find the... the okay, that air cover was ridiculous. 5P is gonna come out, but there we go. Oh my god, yeah, it, it seems like Yo Game Wizard is just all over the place, swinging everything at LL. I got to find uh, confirmation off of this will, just to try to get a little bit of pressure, or, like, just presence in this matchup. Yeah, and now finding that overhead, gonna cash out for the CC, and just gonna try to go for the first save route, and just like that, it's first save, gonna get a full punish. Batista, not really known for her damage, but it's all about just that advantage position. And just like that, with a DP assist, you're gonna get a full combo off this, but this is gonna be red recoverable health. If Adachi is the Resonance character, he's gonna have a lot of health to work with. Ooh, is there time for active switch? No, when both characters get tagged, this is gonna be a ton of damage for this Batista to take. Not quite going to kill, but definitely a good point for Yogin Wizard to try to change things. That was just a defensive play from Elon. Recognize that Yogin Wizard wants to capitalize on that as much as possible. Yeah, the the fact that Yumi is one of the fastest characters in the game, so she's oftentimes going to be using a lot of that like run under mix up. It's just a really good option. Lon aware of it, finding the opportunity and cashing out for that kill. Adachi, now the rest of this character that recoverable health is going to play a factor. Possibly not actually off this damage. The team is not known for its like excessive uh, damage. So we're going to see right now if that's going to be enough. Not quite. But now Game Wizard with a hope and a dream. Yeah, trying to make it happen. The resonance is gone. So the big part of the comeback factor is no longer available. Yo, Game Wizard trying to try to go on the side. That will kill Batista. Can Nuke get the punish? No! No! Accent not even getting the full punish. But the 2 Ps do connect. The gates of Babylon are open. Oh. But Persona going to be able to connect for the 2 Ps. Oh Does connect. Gosh. And Game Wizard, <laughs> just like that, having a moment. Just, oh, like, just the... Just needing to, to get it together right now. 1-1 one, one between these two. Starting off and on with the... <laughs> I love Juan, dude. Oh this my guy gosh. Is, that's not even like a, like a BM, like, you, just, you know, you tried your best. Like, GG's, you tried your best. That was definitely like a, I understand. Yeah, exactly. It's just like an acknowledgement of what's going on. The hell that I'm putting you through with the V13 Batista. It's funny, because like the entire premise of this exhibition is like how these two regions approach a 2.0 landscape, right? And like yeah. Elon's team and like overall strategies like Teleport and Batista 5P, they're pretty old school. Like, and so the this full display of like an old school type team versus Adachi Yumi, really interesting to see it uh, come to fruition. Yeah, and just now finding that 6P, the air lasers, Adachi is really low. The DP does work out kind of. It gets that 6P, a little combo with projectiles, a little bit of zoning. You know how I feel about zoning. <laughs> <laughs> zoning is crazy. Oh yeah, exactly. But I'm gonna be able to use some of that zoning. Gonna be able to yes, projectile, and just like that with a happy birthday, going for the route that is guaranteed. Just gonna keep both characters in for the longest amount of time. That's 8k on one, 10k on another, and can't say that. But gonna be able to find this open here. Run up DP, one down to his signature new 13. Gosh, so you knew Yo Game was, was seeing that coming from a mile away. But she's sitting on four bars. She could make it safe with a double super, but Yogi Wizard having to counterplay ready much ahead of time. Has this new isolated in the corner, trying to get one point on the board for North America. And it's popping off already. Knows that the cross rate, that's going to be it. And just like that, North America puts one game up. And you can see Yogi Wizard is letting them know exactly how he feels about that. And it passes him on the shoulder as well, saying, good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that I really like that. So game was the one of the strongest things in the talk about 2.0, right? About how it changed the landscape. Cross raid was introduced in 2.0, and that's whenever you do your full A auto combo, you're gonna be able to get this little period where like you can hit A again. It's gonna cash out all your cross cage, and it's gonna give you like this flat, like I think it's like 1500 damage, and then give you like after switch. And it's such a good option for a lot of characters. And Adachi, one of the best characters in this game, I think like just across all rages, like everybody agrees, Adachi is just like really good. Right. Uh, is one of the best proponents of using this cross gauge, well, using these uh, cross raid, excuse me. 
and just getting that a little bit of extra damage on deck just made the difference that match and just the, by the optimization by Mr. Wizard, the old game wizard. Absolutely. I like to call the crossfade the cherry on top, right? Where you just yeah. need to squeeze that extra little damage, just route right into it. Of course, like as you've mentioned, it's not a luxury that every character can use equally across the board, just given like combo operation over time and everything. But the old game wizard win. The timer's right to put the cherry on top of that Sunday <laughs> for <laughs> the North America point. He had it. Yeah, it was just really just, that's one of the big things also is like, especially with Adachi, the reason why Adachi is like one of the best that it uses is the fact that like, you have your cross slash for your ender, and that's typically be more damage and you get a safe jump from it. But with the, if you don't have that two bars, if you're able to get like that sort of like cross raid, you're gonna get similar damage, not as good Oki or anything, mm -hmm. but especially for Game Wizard's team, just getting the Yumi on point, then you're gonna be able just to like call the, the Adachi assist 50-50, you know, use that JC and just very good stuff. So right there, Drawing First Blood, Yo Game Wizard over Lawn. We do have our next match, which is going to be coming up. I do believe we have some issues with the PS4, but that also gives us time to like fully explain to everybody at the, the audience today what we are watching. So if you want to go ahead and take that away. Indeed, indeed. You are tuned in to the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle USA versus Asia Teams Exhibition here at CEO Talking 2022. Six players on the North American side. You got Yo Game Wizard, Razo, NY Dante T, Monkey4012, Chop Suey, and Yo Fave Scrub. Taking on Team Asia with Elon of Korea, Nezu of Japan, Hashima of Japan, Pikachu of Japan, Neo Garansan of Japan, and Watamasa of Japan. Uh, we just saw a first to two set. There's going to be a slew of those. Uh, so North America has scored the first point. The first to seven points will be victorious here. So there is an opportunity that we know that for sure everybody will play at least once, yes. right? When we get into that second rotation, there is an option for seeing different matchups come to fruition. If it's a super tight exhibition, everyone may play twice. Yes. This is going to fully depend on how back and forth the nature is of this exhibition as a whole to see if we uh, get a lot of different matchups on display. But it is nice that we do have a format where everyone will get a chance to shine. Because yes. we have, like, this is such a rare opportunity, having these players from Asia come out uh, after all this time. We definitely want to make sure everybody gets the screen time and uh, fair share, not like, you know, snowballing one way or yeah. another. Shout out so. to Gota for the uh, the Jap Japan versus uh, US 50 <laughs> versus 15. For those that are unaware, Gota did win like 13 or something, 9 to 13 games in a row. It was uh, a masterful showing, but unfortunately Gota is not here, but shout outs to them. Indeed. One of my favorite Japanese players to watch because so, so masterful with it. But uh, like mentioned, this is also going to be blind pick. So each player, we talked to the teams beforehand, and we said, "Hey, get your, we get everybody in like one through six. Blaze. Then we get what? Which I got it secretly, and then we get the other list. We match them up, and then we give it back to them, and they're gonna do that again. And we're just gonna run down this order. You cannot. There's no room for like counter picking. This is straight up like, like Game Wizard didn't know he had long. It just turned out that we just had a CEO like top three run back. Right. Like, How convenient is that? Yeah. That, like, <laughs> what do you know? And now we're gonna have two powerhouses." From uh, for both in a Razo who has like so many teams, <laughs> it's just so many different options. I believe they're going to be running with the Hawkman Merkava for this time. And Nezu, like, it's how do we get this? Nezu also has like he plays like 53 teams, yes, <laughs> with 53 characters in the game, so yeah. you know it's real, yeah. Like, Nezu, so uh, on, on the official CEO Taku website for the primer, I did a little bit of blurb of like each of these players, and I called Nezu the wild card of yes. Japan because, like, you don't know what Nezu's gonna lock in at any given time. They have so many different team comps, and like we said, we've been watching these players play casuals over the past couple of days. I've seen Nezu go on Yukiku, I've seen Nezu on Blitz Tank, now it's a Shuragane. Yeah. Like, the, the most common thing you're gonna see on Nezu is like a Shuragane plus one or a Neo plus one, right? But that again, most common. We did run sets with Razo last night with the uh, Adachi Blitz take. Yes! <laughs> but it looks like right now we're going to be getting into it with the Merkava Hawkman on the side of Razo representing NA, and on the Asian team we will have Nezu rocking the Shuragane Neo. So Neo's, again, talking about the whole how do we think about 2.0. Neo in Japan is like one of the top five characters, I believe. Right. In, in their opinion. Uh, and NA, she's a little, like, we're on that mid-tier, if not lower. But we're going to see how that's going to work out in this game with Razo versus Nezu. Off with a good anti run, but no full confirm from it. <laughs> All right, yeah, you see Nezu trying to back off, set up those traps, but Merkava having access to that flight, really able to just kind of like uh, vary the momentum in terms of aerial approach, keep Nezu on their toes. 
Yeah, able to find the, just the mix up there, Opsa burst it. That is one thing that Razo has noted that is like one of their main things that they're gonna go with is like using that like burst whenever you call like both characters to get like some offense started. Just burst it. The team doesn't need Prostrate, but the Persona eating the fireballs is gonna play a big role with a DP unblockable. Unfortunately, drop magic. The oh overhead comes gosh. out. And now Dezu opts to let the, the Shiragon I die, and now it's down to the Resident Neo just to close things out. But will Razo even let that happen? Yeah, I mean, if, if Asia thinks Neo Paulson is strong, this is the opportunity to show it right here, right now, because this is not looking good for Dezu. Razo going to be able to seal the deal extremely convincing with that Merkava Hakuman. Yeah, that's just, I mean, this is just a really good strong show. I mean, right now, like, these are probably, like, I would say Yo Game, obviously everybody's a powerhouse on these teams, right? Right. But I would say Yo Game Wizard and Razo were, like, the two big powerhouses. And I know Yo Game Wizard wanted to fight Lon. And I know, and from playing Razo right, like, just a minute ago to, like, get them ready for this exhibition, they're like, I really want to fight a Dadachi player. And uh, Nezu's not letting that rock, but now, gonna get started here. All right, cross combo. Oh, and the, the bullets come out, the double! Ooh. Am I parry? You're a parry, we all parry! <laughs> what are you swinging at me for? Nothing. Put that away. I'm bringing swords to a gunfight, what you know about it? Oh, uh, and that's actually one of the funny things. If, you, if you're unaware, the Hakuman does have, whenever he slashes any of the projectiles, he will make a seal. However, if you hit any of uh, Shurikane's traps, they will just go away. So, like, it's this weird, like, interaction that is actually, you don't get to see that often. But now, Shurikane's main gimmick in this game is going to be using that, uh, using that mark that we saw there established by a shotgun. And then if she does any of her other supers, she will be able to just insta-kill your character. Yeah, you can see Nezu fishing for that right now. Razo recognizes the dangers ahead, brings that Merkava in unmarked. Okay. All right, gonna be, oh wow, just the, the patience robot. The answer from, oh That my was goodness. obscene. Yeah, that <laughs> hit the tippity toes of Merkava, and now the sandwich is gonna be present. What's the situation gonna look like? Okay, just going for the mids, and all this pressure. Great defense from Nezu, that is plus. And oh, Ooh. saw the whip 5A, thought he could get a turn, but Razo quick on the 5A of their own. Oh my gosh, yeah, just trying to get out of dodge, utilizes the float to escape, but Nezu finding themselves in a sound situation. Razo gonna be able to capitalize on that all day, gets that cross raid. Unburstable. Wow, oh, really, I'm surprised. Wait, wait, really, you didn't cancel the cross raid? That's, I, I'm curious on what that decision was for, and now the, the Neopold is back out, the Shuragani is at full health. This is like, and granted, Razo's still in the lead, and is like, has a good opportunity here, but like, Hakuman has has a, just a time on the clock. If Nezu has two bars with a Shuragani on point, Hakuman's dead. This is just effectively you're trying to play around killing Shuragane and keeping the, the Merkava on the point. Oh but gosh. this combo will probably kill the, the Merkava. Yeah, you're going to spend one bar. Oh, yeah, two bars. And just like that, down to the Mark Hakuman. This is Ooh. dangerous, but Razo's not a stranger to comebacks. Yeah, something else I have my eye on, Bojack, is under 80 seconds. So we have the Rampage time available. That's passively your generating bar. Now, it's been frozen because Razo has activated that resonance. Trying to. Oh my gosh, yeah, just, yep. oh, like you said, all it takes is one hit. That's going to be the Hama O going to be activating the death mark, and Nezu will be able to get the game Optimal. on the board. But literally, like... literally the most damage you can deal in the game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And that's like, and yeah, like well, like mentioned, Rampage Time was a, another addition in the 2.0 patch, and just you're able to build that meter. And honestly, like having the Hakuman, like Hakuman's EX, like Parry is very good. But if your win condition is having two bars on Shirogane, like that definitely is the situation where Nezu is going to be favored. So now tying it up 1-1. One, one, this is going to be seeing if Japan can get a, a little bit of blood on the, the field or if, uh, if America's going to take a 2-0 lead to start things off. Yeah, we'll have to see. I felt like Razo had extremely solid control of the earlier sequences of the latter match. And it, it seems like they're just picking up from where they left off. The issue was like kind of closing out. The Shurugane doing a ton of work. Oh, yeah. And now, I mean, the Neapolitan is just kind of bleeding the back like that. 4P does not go anywhere. But the counter hit, oh, unfortunately, was not able to get the 5 8. Oh, my gosh. Day, and that didn't mark both characters, I'm pretty sure. I think that only marked the Hakuman. Yeah, it looked a little odd. Gonna be slashing away. Now, uh, yeah, all those characters that marked Shurigane is low. So, so long as Ross is able to find a kill here, won't have to worry about being in such dire circumstances. But Nezu taking the fight out. We're getting out of this corner. Yeah, and now, yeah, that's so smart for Nezu. Getting the sh uh, Shurigane back into the back. You gotta be regening, and so that way, the moment you need, you have that two bars and Hawksman's on point, you're gonna call her out and just be potentially just take out the character. But now, we're gonna have to see who can win the, the sticky fingers, uh, just sticking <laughs> all the, the lives out, or just the woman with the umbrella. 
Yeah, and you see Nancy playing it super conservative, right? They don't want to call out that Naoto Shuragane assist too much, put Naoto in danger of dying by like some stray hit or anything. Just want to consolidate that game plan for later. Unfortunately, they've kind of played too defensively, back themselves into a corner, the Neo goes down. And, yeah, it's unfortunate, but now... Oh my Whoa. goodness! <laughs> that 4P, the people's elbow! Just taking out the Shuragane, and that's gonna be the, the lead still continuing the sides of NA with 2 0. There it is. NA has something to prove, and they are here showing up and showing out against Team Asia. Yeah, and. Like that's one of the things that's very interesting about this is that like if you if you pay attention to the Mimi tag scene or even Blaze Blue scene, you've heard of Lon, you've heard of Nezu. Now we're gonna get one player that at least we're going into this, I was familiar with. Like I've heard like some of the Japanese players talk about, oh, it's uh, like Hashima. Uh, but like I you don't see it unless you're like really ingrained or like really like trying to watch like the Gear Shabby streams and like the different like various Japanese surveys, you may not know uh, Hashimo. Hashibo is a Weiss Orie player, and Grant, two rapier characters. Not the typical, like, you know, you, everybody's like, oh, dude, it's Adachi plus one. It's Yumi plus one. Ugh. Like, everybody's just <laughs> playing the same teams this patch. Why I got all that? And Hashibo's like, cool. Not only am I going to play, like, my, my two favorite, like, waifu rapier characters, but, like, he defines the team by just, like, the, the ridiculous tech. Like, did. We've had, like, I mean, like, shout out to Lotad, one of the, the NA players that has learned so much from Hashimo, like, applying that tech. But, like, Hashimo is, like, it, there's a difference in, like, you know, taking that tech and, like, applying it in your own way and, like, inventing that. Right. And just, like, doing that. And Hashimo proves that time and time again. And not only that, they're cosplaying one of their characters. That's, like, a hate power-up. Exactly. And but might I say, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, like, it, it looks great. Seeing it from afar. So they're cosplayed as Weiss. I was just like, yo, Weiss Schnee is in the building. But like in coordinating <laughs> this thing, I was getting up close. Hashimo even has the scar on the eye. Yeah. Like, I was just like, yo, you really got into this. It looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, like really killed it. And now going to be up against Dante. They're trying to find a way around the accessory. <laughs> oh, the classic. The, if you've never cosplayed, you don't know the pain. For real, for real. <laughs> Yo, Weiss was made to fight. I don't know if she was made to game. We're going to find out right now with the headset malfunction. This is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> they, they managed to get it all together. So this is going to be NY Dante Thomas versus Hashima. Hashima we just talked about a little bit. Tell me a little bit about Dante. You know a little about Dante. Yeah, Dante has been around the North American DB tag scene for quite some time. Definitely one of the like uh, more tenured players. We had a huge influx of players in like the 2.0 uh, like update, but Dante has been around kind of like you know definitely far before. Uh, just coming off a win at a uh, summer jam, if I'm not mistaken, plays a lot of like uh, Narukami centric teams. So Narukami Hyde, Narukami Adachi. I'm interested to see what they'll go up against in this context. I mean, one of the uh, big strengths of Weiss, right? We were talking about Rapier characters. It's the long reach, and Weiss has very fast start of normal. So, like, uh, in my experience and, like, observation of things, I feel like those Rapier characters can give Adachi some trouble. You know, you're talking about oh, yeah. a very long, disjointed normal, just, like, stuffing out some of the Persona-centric attacks of Adachi. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a Narukami Hyde pick from Dante, but it's hard to say. I could honestly see it. I think I, I do like the Narukami pick uh, if a, he goes for it. If anything, I don't want to see the Adachi route start. If he does opt for the Adachi, the Ruby could work out. Does opt for the Hyde, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, I was going to note for the reason why, because again, like you mentioned, known for the Narukami and the Adachi. Some right. teams with it, like just so many different teams with it. But the Adachi against Weiss. No, well, okay, against normal rapier characters, Adachi's 5A, like 6A, is going to be able to beat out almost every rapier character's round start. Except for Hashimo, <laughs> right. aka Waishune. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is the <laughs> one character who loses uh, in this, like, in that lineup uh, of the rapier characters. Well, Adachi loses to it. So, like, you can't up back. You have to basically hold it or, like, block the normal and push block it. So you don't want to start the round off with a, with one part. Right. And it's the opposite go for the, uh, actually, Dante with tons of teams mixed this up as well. But does the thing that I mentioned, he does not want the Adachi point. Normally Adachi's point, keeping the Narukami point. Still a good option. I don't know how this matchup, like the, the round start interaction goes. I don't know the frame data on the Narukami 5A. So I don't know if the Weiss is going to beat that out. I guess we're going to find out right now. Yeah, the thing to keep in mind, you know, it's first to two. So, like, gambling on round start may be an approach that neither of these players will go for, one will go for. It's kind of hard to make that assessment. Yeah, so we're going to see right now. Right now, 
NA's up in the lead, but will Dante be able to keep that? Yeah, that's why I mentioned, right? You're going to call that, do the jab, and you're going to be able to get that mix up going. and recognize that you can't act switch just yet. BZO died up in the air. That's going to be an unblockable. Only 2k damage, though. Which that is one of the uh, the merits of it, is that if you do eat it, it's not tons of damage. But, like, it's so dangerous. Plus frame goes for the low. A DP, no respect from Mr. Thomas. Uh, speaking of no respect, just trying to keep Weiss locked down in that gel of mids. Able to fight out Hashimo. Yeah, you see Hashimo is constantly trying to create these sandwich situations just keep Dante under pressure. This time, okay, the first time we saw that there wasn't an active switch and I was surprised. This time Hashimo having an idea for the burst, but not the full combo. Oh, but the mix-up. Dude, it's Otaku. We got so many different anime references right there. Using her stand, we're going to be able to get that four <laughs> feet. Oh, and Whip is a 5A. Okay, wake up super. Not going to work out. And is cornered. This is going to lead to a pretty juicy combo. Actually, up to a little bit less damage. Going for the good Oki. Double over it. That is so good. Ugh. A nice active switch. Adachi at getting in the point is actually a little surprising. He is a little bit the low end, but he's under arrest. There it is. <laughs> yeah, the cross rate yet again, like we mentioned. And our copy, this team does give you the Oki in the corner. You are able to get like a double overhead or a single overhead low. It's such a good option. Plus frames, we'll sandwich situation, I'll just opt to get out of it. Oh, cover hit, but a little bit too forward just because the, the fake corner. Jeez, I love just how persistent Hashimo is. Just really trying to put Dante under pressure. But I feel like Dante's defense in multiple contexts has been fantastic. The blocks have been there. The overall just escape option, just jumping out of dodge, has just been magnificent. Yeah, and now we're going to see just down to the solo Ori. She does have a pretty good resident escape, but again, Dante is just making the definition of just disrespect with these DPs. I do your offense, my offense, Woo! cross slash over of that insane mix up from the sandwich situation. Like, Dante's looking pretty, like, Hush, no discredit to Hashimi. Hashimi was like putting a lot of work in there, but Dante just looked in like complete control yeah. of that game. Right, no, it was extremely, like, uh, from the round start, like, Hashimo played it extremely aggressive, like, already instantly trying to get the sandwich going, and it was successful. Dante had to block, like, Nixon. Dante had to guess in multiple exchanges throughout that match. I think just the overall navigation and just uh, awareness of the situation at hand, having a counterplay for it uh, accordingly is really what kind of carried them to the end there, because despite all the pressure they were under, as you said, they looked like they were in full control the entire time. Yeah. And like, even, and whenever I say like full control, it's not even like, oh, you know, Dante got hit, you know, it wasn't a perfect whatever. Right. It's just the fact of like, even though Hashimoto could like find those hits, Dante just, the defense, like you mentioned, just the capitalization of all those situations, just masterful and able to take that first game. And now, so no going to be able to get a happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> and just fry your little brat, get a little bit of 6k, not, doesn't get great Oki, but just going to be able to opt out and go for the empty low off of the BZ and I mix up. Oh my goodness. Sheesh. Cross slash gonna get another save jump. And what like that was thinking that try to call it out. Double overhead on that JA. This character is so good. Oh my god. It's not where you wanna be if you're hot though. And oh my god, just a spray for P. The JT actress with Hashimo trying to do it the signature character they have cosplaying long god. Orie may be joining her. And there it is, NY Dante T puts a third one on the board for Team USA. Yeah, I mean, that was just masterful play from Dante. And like, that is one of the things, again, going back to like the, the Japanese meta, the, the American meta, whatnot. America thinks like, at least the general consistency is like, uh, is that Narukami, you, whatever you want to call them, like top, top tier. Like, yes. I don't know top five, I don't know like top four or whatever, but like definitely in that like, you know, like up there with Adachi, with the uh, just, Yumi and the likes, just oh, such a strong character. But Japan, not really feeling it. Not really like a common thing. We could see that like matchup in experience. Like in just how like Hashimoto dealt like, you know, the double overhead, not dealing with like the, the BZO dive stuff because nobody really plays like Narukami, like the American Narukami. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned that because it's not only a matter of Narukami being one of the super prevalent like go-to top five characters, but also the pairing of Narukami Adachi. Yes. I feel like in a lot of North American players' opinion, is like one of the best teams in the game. Like, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like seeing that uh, come fruition, maybe not, as you said, being as familiar with the play style like that kind of showed itself. North America is trying to speed run this right now, it seems. <laughs> like, I mean, we're talking about, like, it could be really close, but, like, again, like, this is just, like, one of those things where it's, like, we've seen, like, round one, nail biter close. Like, just, and it's a run back from CEO. The players are familiar with each other. Round two. Like, uh, I don't know if they played it recently. Like, you know, I don't know if the uh, Razo or Dezu have ever really, like, played like that, but, like, right. it definitely was just, like, Razo was, like, you know, 
arguably like the best PB tag player in America. Uh, so just breaking that out and just showing that off is like was just like okay, this is gonna be like what a, Japan's wild card versus like America's like anchor almost yes. to a degree. Uh, and then that one was just straight up like. Even though it was like very much in favor of Dante, you could definitely attribute that just to like the level of like experience that Dante has versus these characters versus what a Hashimo has. Now it looks like we're gonna get to our next match, which is gonna be Monkey 4012 versus Piksu. Piksu is another player who you do, I, we had to dig for his footage <laughs> to like know what he's going on because I had to go to your channel where you were streaming Evo pools and like just casuals and whatnot. So right. I was like, who is Piksu? And so I, I was like, okay, well maybe they're there. And so I was like, oh well, yeah, they went to Evo. So I was like, okay, where's like the, the Vortex Gallery like uh, side of it? Well, I was like, okay, where is it? Where is it? I like dig through the VODs. I was like, okay, they're a Rachel Batista player. We have one of those America. Shout out to Cake, Victor yep. of CEO, the, the one before this. Uh, and then she's going to be rocking that. And Pixu is, like, really good. Yeah, Pixu is fantastic. I'm so glad that you mentioned that story about Vortex Gallery because I was, a, I was a part of the organization of Vortex Gallery. And when we saw Pixu in the players list, we had no idea what to do because, like, they had <laughs> they had a pretty strong placing at EVO Japan. And I was, like, the only tournament there. They were never on stream. And I'm just like, I, I don't know, like it. So yeah. they come to Vortex Gallery, and it turns out they're this cracked Rachel Batista player. They got top made in Vortex Gallery. And they've, you know, we've been seeing them play throughout the weekend. It's just like, wh wh where have you been? Like, yeah. <laughs> like so, <laughs> that's one of the beauty, beautiful things with like a lot of these players. Is like even for like even the NAC to a degree. Like you'll be like, oh yeah, I know about whoever X, Y, or Z player because I've net played with them. Right. And like the same thing from Japan, but because even with rollback coming back, there's like the, you know, it's a little rough playing like the, the Japan to NA a lot of the time, unless you're like West Coast with fiber. Uh, so it definitely like, you can play. It's definitely not like the, the preferred method for I think either party. Right. So you don't really see it too often, but like Japan knows about Pixu. Like, oh yeah, this guy's cracked. This guy's so good. And like, and we're like, oh yeah, no, the team is cracked. We don't know this player. Yeah. And so we're going to see right now What's going to work out? Monkey has a million teams he can play. I didn't even see what he locked in. I'm, you want to take a gamble? I'm going to go Rock Vision. Cheer you on? Yeah. I mean, I hear the voice line in the back, so it's kind of spoiling it for me. If there's a oh, gotcha, I guarantee there's a Yumi there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We got mixed. <laughs> Not mixed, so uh, yeah. Well, shout outs to uh, the monkey for smashing on the intros. Yumi Adachi, one of the teams he is known for. Actually, kind of surprised he's rocking out. But maybe this is preferred. I don't know what his preferred team is against Cake, but we're going to see right now. Oh, that's so unfortunate. A oh, double unfortunate because he called the wrong assist for that situation. The AC9 connects. It goes for the early super, keeping it first safe. Getting that nice 6K and going to get the keys in corner position. Oh my gosh. Yeah, tried to guarantee the air and block. Well, I think both characters got hit, so maybe going to get Kill on Batista, but Monkey just keeping the pressure strong. Batista yep. almost a fatal territory there. Yep, nice burst, just like that. Monkey is just a really, really fast player. So we're gonna see that all oh, calling the pistons is gonna get sniped for it. The Rachel has so much, like so much red life to work with. Just needs to get into that residence at some point. Opting to use a little volume to get a safe activation. The Dachi don't care about that. All right. Now, this can be one of Rachel's strong points of a comeback, right? The residence activation for the passive meter gain. Rachel has all this stuff that she can fill the screen with in terms of George, Labellia's a happy birthday here. Could be a nice point of momentum. Yeah, now we're going to see that the OK situation. George the 13th gets some frogs in the chat with the OS frog. We're going to have the DP. The mix-up comes out. That is a safe jump. The cross slash is isolated. I don't know if he's going to get too close with it. Ooh, oh it does gosh. kill the Yumi. The DP comes out. Now, going to use the BZO to get that resonance. And now it's down to a pixel. And Monkey's getting all this life back. George, hey, the tank. George, hold it down for me real quick. I got to fight this crazy detective with lasers, I guess. Imagine trying to press a button. And while George, the 13th royalty, is on the screen. All right, it's Labellia. Nice push block out just to get the situation going in his favor. Has to be really careful. George is right there! Oh my gosh! With the comeback on the Rachel Pixu with a 1 HP. Is it really a 2v2 game? Bojack is like 2v20 with all these Georges that are on the screen. It's not always <laughs> a 2v20 on the screen. I think it's like a 10v6 at this point because George is like <laughs> four characters, bro. Four right. players. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, what a magnificent comeback there for Pixu. So that, that, that is a 
a great thing to feel good about if you're picked through in terms of like the set count, right? But when oh, it yeah. comes to this 2v2 game, it has been monkey dominant. Like there's a reason why that Rachel was isolated to the uh, output potential so fast. It's because of a round start like this. Like it's just straight up aggression, take the fight with Batista, keep your picks through locked down. So I imagine picks through wants to survive a little bit longer in the 2v2 game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now we're gonna see because you really want that Rachel to get at least you want Rachel on the anchor. You really want that Residence Four because Residence Four, the Tempest Dahlia, so strong. Finding the two B though, gonna be able to get the full round here. But just not really going for damage, but able to get something started here. The five P does come out. A nice movement from Monkey to avoid it. Five Bs are out. Persona and he doesn't play nice. I'm trying to do the parry. I like that call from uh, Monkey. All right, the BCO, the first will not be back in time, and this is deja vu that Rachel coming in. But we've already seen how much of a terror that she can be. Monkey trying to make sure that's oh, not the game, no. but what is going on? He went for the fancy combo, and just like that, that is going to punish him. But that, I don't, that is a, I don't know if that's like her best combo, but I mean, hey, takes you able to get the corner off it. Probably is looking to get that corner position, all honestly. But the 5A starter, this is going to be her dance. And yeah. now, we cash it out with a boom, boom, poo into the boom boom pow i know you like my style monkey 4012 gonna be tying it up one one the adachi yumi taking it to them and i mean the big uh kind of turnaround factor was not allowing for that rachel resonance just like keeping pixu locked down not having to deal with multiple georges on the screen and all the chaos that could ensue like whenever rachel is on that like residence level you're like okay this is 15 seconds I have to make it where she cannot play and she cannot get George out. Because George is the anchor of that team. But this Ooh! is a really, really good start for Monkey here. Uh, that is half life on both characters. No assist, have, like no uh, res residence level has been gained. George from the top rope. Oh my gosh. Yo, he's got to be able to snipe out the Dachi. Ooh. Oh, nice break on the Persona. That was like the weirdest. I've never <laughs> seen that like freeze frame with it. So Lavelia comes out and nice, giving him the fourth. And I have this Cully. Cully is going to come out. The DP does connect, but hey. All right. Ooh, makes him first save. That Batista is going to be in danger, Monkey. And you know what's funny about this is even though like the cross, the cross rate is going to kill you. And we're just going to see that level three Rachel again does not have the life total that we saw in a few of the other games. And that is going to come out when we see just the projectile plus assist, one of the best, not really one of the best, but one of those very strong aspects is just that solo fireball plus the Dachi 6P in the back line. Right there showing its strength and taking another win for NA. This is this is a pretty convincing start. I, I would say so. I mean, like the, the thing that is worth noting is that although it is 4-0, the in between, like the, the the actual internal sets, have been close. We've, we've seen yes. like some two ones. Some of these matches are going down on the wire. Some are a little bit fast paced. Some are a little bit more slow paced. So it's definitely extremely great matches. But if you're just talking about the macro, if you're talking about the on paper score, North America's running away with this right now. Oh yeah, like it, it, the sets have been fantastic. But it's still yeah, it, on, like it's all about closing it out. And when it comes to closing it out, we have my favorite. Japanese Whoa. player. I'm going to get up. so biased. <laughs> Full disclosure, this is the one and only, the best Asriel, Neo Gurenzov from Japan, coming all the way, playing the best Asriel team, Adachi uh, Asriel. And, like, dude, this, so Gurenzov, for anybody that doesn't know, like, like I mentioned, the, the, the Japanese Asriel, like, the Asriel in general. Like, there's myself in the NA, and then there's Gurenzov. And we have worked like in one point, like 1 1.3 or something, we were in the DMs. We were like always like having these competitions. Like, hey, here's this combo. Hey, here's this tech. Oh, I've got better th tech than you. Like, oh, okay, well, here's my better combo. It's like, okay, well, here's my better combo. Like, right. we had a competition to see who can make like the nastiest stuff for like the, uh, for Azure Gordon. 2.0 comes around. We, I try out a at, uh, at one, at, I think it was Hideo Taku with one of the like early builds, mm -hmm. and I was like, dude, girls on Adachi, Adachi Azri. He's like, I'll try it out, and then he got back to me. He's like, team's team's cracked, <laughs> team's cracked. It's the best team. Bordeaux no goodbye. Right. Uh, and now we're gonna see how that's gonna go up against a player we don't really get to see too often in a lot of tournaments, a Chop Suey. Yes, indeed. So if I called uh, Nezu Japan's wild card, I label Chop Suey as North America's secret weapon. Because in terms of offline representation, Chop Suey has minimal. 
Like, there hasn't been a lot of, like, in-person tournaments that Chopsuit has been to. Really a player that's made more of a name of themselves in the online era. Like, if you uh, follow any of, like, the recent COVID-era uh, online blitz across tag battle tournaments, I'm talking, like, Wednesday Night Fights, uh, Don Cons, Big 8s, any of those. Chopsuit is constantly in those top 8s, those top 3s, and getting dubs. Mm -hmm. Definitely getting dubs when we're going to be on a stage of this caliber in terms oh, yeah. of, like, a North America representation. But that online representation Chopsuit has had has been so strong. Definitely renowned as one of the best Izuwe players that we have in America to earn themselves a spot on this team. And they've looked amazing. Like, Izuwe can be a little bit on the technical side when it comes to execution. So seeing Chopsuit really being able to flourish in terms of, like, a no-delay offline environment has really been a treat. Yes. And, like, I mean, we're talking about Chop all, like, all yesterday playing all the games a little bit. It's, like... Definitely like a lightning. The dude is really smart with like how he operates in the game. So we're gonna see how that's gonna come on with this. Also, I think it's super funny because of the American team, Chomp was the only one who's like, I'm not afraid of Gorizon. I don't need like I don't need you to break down what Azrael's doing, what the tech is. And right now, breaking out some tech, and this is Gorizon's specialty. Those just frame windows at like towards the end are like one or two frames, and Gorizon nails them nearly every time. It's so insane. This dude's execution is like par none. Insanity when you see Grunzon trying to keep Chopsui locked down by any means necessary. Doesn't go for the air on block, but tries to oh. go for a read. Chopsui is staying extremely patient. Yeah, very good option there from Chop, recognizing that just Grunzon messed up the uh, oh my God. Up there. Are you a victim? Uh, he, he's. Oh, oh not that right! real health, baby! Four Beach Connects, gonna get the cross combo and gonna go for the active switch. Adachi is now the point. And now we're just gonna get a, a normal, normal Adachi route just with the cross combo. Ooh. Whipping the meaty and going for a low, though that is just gonna be a bait, but because it hit so high up, it was a little harder to punish. Man, I'm really kind of shocked that Gurnsound's willingness to keep calling this Azrael assist. I mean, Azrael does not have the most amount of health. Any, like, slight miscalculation, they could be going down. Yeah, no, that is definitely like Gurzon loves to play on the edge because it's the case of like when Asriel, whenever you get like the the Dante plus Asriel assist situation going, it could kill. But speaking of a kill, with that cross rate, now getting the anti air five A is down to the Izoya. This magic gets a little weird just because of the fact of like Izoya has really good air options and Asriel's like air game is like here non-existent. Okay. But if he ever gets Ooh. hit, he is dead. Like unironically. You see them looking no, for it, and we have an Astral! That's my Gurazon! That's my oh Gurazon! <laughs> Let's go, the first Astral! You want to talk about someone that's excited, none by his commentary, Bill Jack. I'm full biased for this <laughs> one, dude! <laughs> Man, I don't even think you've really given the full context of how much of a can of candy store you've been Dude, playing games with Gurzon for the past Gurzon, couple of days. Gurzon is like, is effectively my brother, dude. <laughs> we played on like a first to 100 at Evo and it ended like 198. Yes. Like, not this Evo, like the, the Evo that is tag as a main game last one. But, oh, it's so, dude, Gurzon's one of my favorite players. Anyways, no bias. <laughs> Here we go, let's see if Chop Suey can bring this back. The mental weight that Astro can have on the average player is extremely heavy, but Chop Suey just said, I'm fully cool, calm and collected, it is what it is, taking a fight the girls on instantaneously. Working on a perfect, that Sadanti should be going down with this confirmed. No! Oh, the unfortunate drop, Boris finger coming out Woo. with the Blizzard Girls up, but now using the X projectile, gonna be able to clip the toes. This is gonna be effectively like just the comeback story for Girls on. The DP does connect, there is still room for a perfect. But we're gonna see if that's gonna come out for that four view. It's fantastic call here from Trump Sui. Gonna be able to get something started here. There it is. Yeah, something to keep in mind. Uh, since the Adachi did go down so fast, you build up those resonance diamonds the more that you do team centric action. So calling assist, going to the cross combo, Astro switching. Trump Sui was so dominant, the new Gurmson only has the level three resonance. So they don't have access to Astro this time around. They're gonna need to land a little bit more hits in order to make this comeback. Oh yeah, and uh, unfortunate accidental miss this one. Using the dash to max efficiency, that is burst save! Gonna be able to open oh, miss the just frame. Ooh. Very, very rare situation where Gurzon is gonna miss the just frame. That uh, uh, so just really good use. The JC oh is so good in this matchup. The 5A comes out. Gonna be able to take him for a ride. Here we go! He's oh, my, oh yeah, yo. he just wanted to get he wanted to party on it for a little bit. The wake up super is gonna whiff, and now just like that chop. 
on there. I honestly think so. We've been talking a little about Gurzon showed me some new tech, some Discord tech that yes. I've been. Uh, you can attest. I have been losing my mind. We we all lost our mind when we all saw this, <laughs> and I'm still losing my mind. <laughs> and I believe that was a mis input on what he was trying to do. Because what if for those that don't know, Azrael's five BB uh, is that drop kick. He gets the just rate. You can resonance cancel. Like you can dash in the resonance cancel and then get a full combo from it. And it leads to the, some of the, the gross situations in this game. But now speaking of gross situations. Sandwich situations is getting back into the Adachi and just really wants to play the Adachi point. And that's so much unrecoverable life on this side of the Izeo. Oh my gosh, the clothesline from Hell, not able to get the full capitalization on it. He comes out back into this corner. Chop Sui's aggression just being relentless. Alright, and the ice block from Gruz on the push block does come out. The overhead comes out. The Adachi needs to get out of there. And this is going to be a good way to do it, because this is going to be a Bezio Knight into the active switch. Going to be able to get these meterless just frames. One or two frame window. Goes for the mix-up. Oh, it's so unreactable. That's the first time I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> Chop Sui. I mean, this is his girl, Izuyoi. Definitely a specialist type of character. Need to put your all into it. But just putting their all into it with that clothesline is the Azrael, courtesy of New Grandson. Age is not out of this yet. I'm gonna stop him, and I'm going to put a game on the board. Asia, not gonna be getting swept. It will be 4-1 with Neil Gonzalez showing look, that they're still breathing. Look, Chop Suey's a homie, all <laughs> A's homie. That's my guru. <laughs> Let's go, dude. That's one of the things that, like, it takes, like, if you don't know Azra that well, what he did at the very end, again, one or two frame, like, one to two frame area. Because like it's it's hard to exactly tell with these just frame windows, right? Uh, but it is one or two frames. Getting that loop, he had two two meter, like that is enough for a super. He is not going to build enough meter for that. So he says, I'm not even gonna. I'm going to test my execution here for the game almost. Or well, not like for the you know for for the game winning combo. Right. I'm gonna right, say right. I'm gonna do like five of these just frames over and over and over because even though I could go to value and get all this for free. I don't need it. It's yeah. not, maybe it's not going to do enough damage. I'm just going in with the sauce, and he's just going to bust it on him. And now, just like that, Asia is on the board. It's uh, was it four one now? I believe it is four one. Yeah. So Asia fighting back, and I, I feel like it's uh, intriguing that Gurren is the one that was able to get it because like just in talking with people, I feel like Gurren is the type of player that people may have been the most skeptical about. Just like uh, going into it, would I win? Do I want to fight Gurren Because He's, he's a maniac. He's a monster. He's, he's your favorite player for a reason. I understand. <laughs> so for yeah, no, a lot of the players like whenever you look at this list, it's definitely like the you know oh well like hey, well, granted it's up here for Zia Taku, just all the great sponsors, great tournament. With the very we're already we're already having a good time. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's only like day one here. I re I'm really appreciative to see Otaku setting it up this way for Friday. It's a community day. Like yes. they, there's no like main line brackets that are going on today. Just a couple of side things. This is exhibition that we're able to run and have it on the stream no less. I'm eternally grateful. Yeah. No. It's it's fantastic that. We are able to do this and show just the everybody's like coming out with this. This way, everybody coming out. How, talk a little bit about Yo Fame Scrub. What's Brother Jab up to? I mean, Yo Fame Scrub, I mean, he, he was next to me on the flight watching my live reactions to everything everywhere all at once because, <laughs> geez Louise, that movie is a trip, uh, even though I've only seen half of it. But jokes aside, <laughs> Yo Fame Scrub. One of America's strongest, definitely, absolutely one of West Coast and SoCal strongest. We're talking the Combo Breaker champion, Frosty Faust champion for 2022. Uh, a Ragna specialist, I would say, but recently, I'm actually surprised that they're logging in this team because they've actually been uh, testing out a Yumi Ruby comp that they wanted to have uh, solidified for this event. Uh, but extremely flashy player to watch. And you're going to be going with the Ragnar for this exhibition, it seems. Oh, absolutely. And on the other side here, representing Japan, is going to be Wadamasa. And if uh, just if you're like me going into this event, I'm like, who's Wadamasa? And I looked around, and there's only like a couple of things for on the Gearshabu like stream. So shout out Gearshabu, really representing a lot of the Japanese scene and like for the YouTube space for between all the tournaments so on. And I actually had like a couple of sets from like like last year that had like uh, Hashimo and Gear, like and uh, Manasama both playing. And so I was like, oh, you get to see this fantastic Mika Carmine, and, and really like showing not only why this team is strong, but also just like has some of the funniest answers to like a lot of things. It just makes their like aggressive playstyle work. Finding that rocket dive is going to be connected with that 6P, and then just going to be able to get a little bit of start in here. Okay. Set. Oh! <laughs> I'm never blocking that in my life. Perfect timing on the assist to come back as well. Going to be able to get all that little bit of life back. The cross rate is going to set up for a little bit of Oki and just a little bit of extra damage. 
Yeah, you see Yofei from Scarab trying to take to the skies. That could be dangerous if Mika. She has extremely great control when it comes to that JC being utilized. Back up with the Carmine Pinwheel. Nice. Get off me. Yeah, DP on reaction to the mix-up. Oh my goodness, Ruby J.A. Hitting from down to all, all the way across the street. Oh, Ooh. nice happy birthday. Yo, I can't even bro. see my man's up there. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Can we hit much higher? <laughs> oh my gosh. The one piece is real. The one mix up <laughs> is real here for Yo Face Scrub. Really taking the fight to Wadabasa. All of this has changed. Beautiful tech. Great defense. Oh, and that's a happy birthday. My, everybody's just, everybody's growing older as we watch. Oh my gosh. Woo. Okay. Oh, Whoa! that's so that's so <laughs> hard to react. That is actually like that's that's ridiculous. All right, nice setup for the situation. Full cross gauge. Two bars on Scrub if he wants to activate. Now activates the resident. It's gonna be able to nice block of the overhead. Does not block the four P. That's gonna be game one to Watamasa with this cross raid. Oh my gosh! And you can see from Watamasa catching that cross raid. We, we see it out of our peripheral vision. Just a little bit of a fist pump. You could definitely tell the team Asia, uh, team Asia is trying to mount some momentum. Like they, they recognize the circumstances at hand. USA has had a strong start, but they, they did not come out here for it to be one-sided. They, they are looking to really show off, and I think that game was pivotal in terms of water muscles. Did you see them bobbing their head? Body language just looked like they're confident going into this. Yeah, like definitely off the games that we saw yesterday with all the the Japanese players, like all the games were really close. But one of the players that stood out to me was Watamasa. Oh yeah, like Watamasa, just every game, like the games that he would win were just so like we're like we saw using the dirtiest of mix up, using just all, like really showing like I mean like we've had a lot of players like use this team, mess around with this team like in the past, right? Like base and so on. Yeah, but like really showing like this team has. Like you get this team has evolved so much in so little time. Like it's ridiculous that what what Wadamasa is able to pull out here. Fantastic mix up options, keeping it burst safe. Alright, and yeah, just like that, gonna get the just the health back. Probably not gonna spend the cross rate because you're full health. And now nice cross up creates the sandwich. Yeah, just the constant pressure here. It feels like we were just in this cross combo at this situation. And Wadamasa, oh my gosh, oh. was that intentional? Yes, <laughs> actually, I think so. He just opted to do it, so that way Scrub would go back and then just able to like get another like J.A.'s. And now Wadamasa is on a chance for a perfect. I, I commented for that yeah, immediately. It happens to the best of us. And you're definitely the GOAT, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now, okay, so I'm able to get a little bit started here. Scrub also for just noting that he has level one residence in the cross combo to activate freeze frame. Extremely clutch. I love the way that Wadamasa used the remainder of that cross combo, just applying constant blocking pressure to push Scrub into this corner, not be in a comfy situation. Fortune Scrub is trying to navigate out, and they are just running into all the traps in relation to Carmine Assist. Mika just flying all over the place. What do you do? Oh, not block the mix up. That is so. That's what this is something that Raza was noted to like to us, and I was like, oh, that is like a really good observation. Wadamasa was like, whenever it comes to anything, is like, Wadamasa is going to present a lot of Carmine J because in every set in the casuals, he never did not convert. He, right. all, if his JA came out, like Carmine JA came out, it was converted. It was a full combo. And just noting like the way that his team works and the way like just the situational awareness that he's able to present and just the mix up and we'll, using that JA there for the active switch, he can't react to that. And so what I find most significant is like it's that type of optimization and just overall mastery of Carmine and Mika routes that makes Watamasa so extremely threatening on a team like Pika Carmine. Because as you said, we've had players in the past in North America that have played that team. We've had Base, we've had Tempest. And uh, what we know it for is that that team can very quickly turn into a one-player game. Yes. Unblockable loops, where you throw the Carmine pinwheel and you have Mika do the uh, throw on the same frame. And essentially, that can loop into each other and that can be a very solid win condition that the team has. But if you have those optimization on those Carmine JAs, on any possible hit that can actually happen, we didn't even have to see. We didn't even see Wadamasa have to go for that win condition. It was just overall solid play and just confidence on their Carmine and Mika respectively. Yeah, and I do believe like it's just fantastic play, and I do believe that was all of our players in this like first round of the blind picks. We saw everybody got to play once. Shout out to Gota. So now we're gonna be moving into round two of the blind picks. So the way we did, the way we're doing this is that we we're like, oh well, maybe we'll keep like the same order. It's like no, that's bull. What we're gonna do? I'm you know, Hashimo team leader. Uh, who was the team leader? It was Dante Thomas? No, it was Monkey. Monkey was the team lead. Right. And just, they, they talked it out. They're like, okay, we're going to like get the round two where it's a different order. So now, it's still first to seven. NA's still in the lead. It is 4-2. Indeed. So like, it, 
and it, all the everybody's back in. Wadamasa could be up early, he could be late. But now, right now, we're gonna have next on stream is gonna be Razo. What, like we mentioned, one of the, the like anchors of the NA team. Like, like you have scrub. Like, I mean, everybody. Obviously, everybody who's like a top contender. Right. But like, which, like consistent like tournament wins and stuff like that, or like consistent like top threes, top fours, and whatnot. Razo's like scrub and so on. Razo's gonna be represented here. Yeah. Versus my man Neo Carissa. <laughs> once they get once they get on stage, on, there we go. But uh, so this is also funny because uh, NA has been hammering me questions. <laughs> we're they're like we want to win. We the Guruzan like Guruzan is like gonna be like 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 I mentioned a little bit skeptical, but we're like we need to know what Azure could do. And I have to like so they're like okay look, <laughs> I did make like the most boring 50 minute video on how to beat this character, but I'll break it down for you anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now we're gonna have like and we we ran some casuals. Razo is definitely like really strong and like really knows how to like deal with a lot of the common situations in BB tag. It just in a really effective way. And like we were playing, Raza was super hot. And like I mentioned, we really wanted to play one of the Adachis. is like, I would argue is like the Adachi of Japan. Oh yeah. Like, he, I mean, he's the Azrael and like, I would say the Adachi. And, and obviously both the team together, he's also that. Like. <laughs> right, no, in terms of the prep time, because I was a uh, witness of all of this too, the prep time that Raza has made for this matchup is definitely going to be beneficial because this yes. matchup is something that ended up needing to be played. It could have been anybody. Raza wanted to make sure that if they did run the Gronsan, they would have uh, an answer. And I mean, Raza, if you're watching this stream and you're familiar with BB Tai, you might be familiar with Strive as well. Raza's just a intelligent player no matter what game that they kind of lay their hands on. Yeah, just go in, Indeed, with the sauce, doesn't matter what it may be. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Razzle being able to dissect that matchup, I imagine that they're going to be having an extremely strong presence going into this match, but I mean, Gurunsan is hot. Gurunsan has essentially started the streak that Ace is trying to build to even this thing up a little bit more, because, you know, we are at 4-2. Yes. New Gurunsan lit that fire. With this set, you got to imagine that there's someone to set of the blaze and just have match after match after match going to Ace's favor. Yeah, and, like, I really do like this decision because they did... This wasn't like an immediate thing to establish. So like, so they did wait for a few games to see how it was going, and they saw. I want to say this was around the time like Guruzan's win, and they saw Guruzan is is ridiculous. Like, he's really strong right now. They're gonna be able to like just really like he's he's he started the fire like you mentioned. Right. So we're gonna get him right back in. He's the he's the the fire. He's the torch bearer. He's like <laughs> get our two points, Guruzan. <laughs> and then, but unfortunately for Guruzan. Uh, at least, Guruzan is definitely the better player in the neutral when it comes to us too. I have the better combos and I do a lot of like more of that, but Guruzan's neutral is like, I can't even come close to, right. to that, to his skill level when it comes to just these, these situations that he's going to be able to present. And that is going to be the, I think the biggest problem that Razo is going to have to overcome here is that like, because asking for me for games, Razo washed me, full disclosure. It was like 7-1 or something. No shame in that. Uh, no, I mean, I'll, <laughs> they can wash me any day of the week, right. bro. <laughs> but um, like, when it comes to like, so, but it's going to be down to like, how, how they adapt to how Guruzan presents the neutral. And also, they didn't play this team against me, so we're going to see how that's going to apply right now. Oh, try to contest with the Yank. Thought this was going to come out early, and now the Carmine is going to get the party started. Oh and my god. Adachi is the point. Okay, is not able to set up for the, uh, the unblockable loop. Azrael does have to come down, and you cannot uh, use the just the unblockable loops against Azrael. And Guruzan knows this. And yeah, and he's yeah. aware of this as well. Ooh. The backdash plus assist is not gonna work versus the just using a meaty plus an assist. And that is gonna kill the Adachi. Azrael's still alive, gonna cash out the two bars and just gonna get that damage. And I mean, like this is looking really good for Razo, but not out of the game yet. Nero goes on trying to find an opening. Yeah, we've seen Gurazan do this before with the solo Azro. I believe most of the heart is set on this character. It says who's going to be an agent of chaos when it comes to helping a neighbor Azro, but they oh. can do it all by themselves if need be. That is such a smart thing. So Valiant is going to, it does have armor, and you're not going to get it whenever you're like activating it normally. Uh, oh, that was a really good wow. block from Razo, applying the tech. Very good stuff. Ooh, that's a double oh. swing. Very good movement from Razo. Grozon recognized, hey, that was a counter on the assist. I'm going to be able to get this combo. You're going to stay in front of me, right? Right. What do you mean you're behind me? Right. <laughs> 
extremely fantastic situational awareness there from Raza. I, I also find it interesting that you noted that they went with the, the Yang Karma, and even though that's not what they practice against you. I'm not sure what the ideology is around it, but it's working out. I did, honestly, in all fairness, I did suggest go with this team because I think this is going to be the better team uh, for the situation. That was, and that is one thing that we also talked about is just any time that Adachi, and a lot of Adachi teams, when you get the AZO plus like six well, like XP started, uh, like using burst is a very good option to like cancel out the situation. Now Grozad's gonna get the media situation, get the BZO die, but no active switch off road to the Azrael. Very unfortunate. But now just all this pressure. All right, can't take it anymore. The Growler is gonna come out. The Phalanx comes out. No! Oh my gosh, just the back and forth swinging of Gambit as it relates to armor and counterplay. Razo comes out on top with unburstable damage. This is gonna be setting up for one of those unblockable situations we discussed, but he calls the Growler in order to interrupt it. <laughs> Oh, and the Growler is able to get against the full confirm. Not no far way. enough for the 6P, though. Recognizing can press that 2A there. Cross combo. BZO Knight is going to contest. Nice DP from Razo. Back How? to the Yang. It's Party City oh, with that 5P. Gosh. <laughs> How oh. was Razo able to do that? Kill one character on one side of the screen and keep another one locked down on the other side of the screen. And bring him back to Adachi's grave, dude. Insanity, Grandson committed to that DP, but it only oh. makes contact once with Razo's Yang, and now Razo gonna be putting the finishing touches and put North America up 5-2. Yeah, that is so good. 5-2 now for America, and I mean, like, you could just see Razo was so, so aware of, like, a lot of the situations, and, like, Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll be, I'll be that guy. I was like, used literally every piece of advice I gave them. <laughs> we played like eight games. Right. It, it didn't even, like, they weren't close, dude. <laughs> and then, like, really, like, applied it's all the advice without, like, even getting much playtime. Right. Razo's goaded, dude. Just built differently. Just like eight games, all I got to solidify all this information. Oh, Karma and Yang as well. All right, I got that. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, like, no, no. <laughs> like uh, that's so. And like, because that was the other thing. Is like, again, playing like played me with like the the Hawkman Merkava, and then it was like, oh yeah, no, this is fantastic. Did like again? I remember I was suggested like it was the other day I suggested that they played that. I was like, I don't know. I'll see how I feel about it. Right. And played it, and then it's just like, what do you know? Well, granted, uh, Yang I think is a very annoying character in terms of to deal with for this team, uh, just because of how the armor interacts with the Dachi and with uh, with Azrael and Carmine. Is one of Azrael's worst matchups. Ah, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and also, I don't really like the Adachi matchup, like Adachi versus Carmine. So, that's just my personal uh, insight as like of the player, like the the, the American Guru's on, if you would. Uh, but now, like, fantastic. Uh, that's you took out the torch barrier. Yeah, yeah. We're five two. Na's like, like I don't want to say taking like taking away with it, but like Na's doing good. And th I think this is probably one of the worst things that that could happen to Japan right now is we have a repeat game. Wow, no, you're right. <laughs> this, so, like we mentioned, like, we mentioned we're like, you know, oh, Narukami and, like, uh, Neo and all these other characters aren't, like, super represented in some of our regions. Like, you know, Narukami not really represented in Japan and vice versa. Uh, and the, the match that was probably the most one-sided be due to the, like, the lack of experience on the, the individual Narukami as well as the team is back in action. Right. This Again, this is blind pick. I don't think you could get as unlucky on Team Japan <laughs> <laughs> with this matchup. And now, granted, Hashimo has had several minutes, has time to relax, drink some water, kind of talk with the teammates, see what's going on. What do I, what do I need to improve on? What's, what's the change up that I need to do here? So like, applying that could be key here, but we're gonna see. And Dante as well, like, it'd be great to have that time. Maybe he's not gonna be as hot as he was. We're gonna find out, like, real quick between these two. Yeah, and I mean, it, what ideology is Dante putting here? Because I, I don't know if this button check is going live. They chose uh, Ruby and Adachi. If they, like, apply that type of uh, switch up to the matchup, that could be interesting. I, I, I'm personally under the ideology of, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but yeah, th th as you mentioned, with like this being a repeat matchup, Hashimo not only having to overcome this, but under such critical circumstances, because like you don't want USA going up 6 2 and then just yeah. like any given set, that's it. So, probably yeah. has a lot of weight on their shoulders, but Hashimo, we've been seeing over the past couple of days, phenomenal player yes. with this Weiss Ori, just an absolute specialist in terms of it. So. And honestly, the one thing that we did not see, and granted, like, you're, you're there, but of course, Mojang. Is like we didn't get to see, like 
Hashiba play right. that much. We saw like the neutral, we saw the really persistent pokes that like the Weiss is gonna present and like the stand mix up from Aurier. Mm -hmm. But like we didn't like see them play, you know. Dante got to play. Yes. Dante was like on the playground. Like he had the whole like the monkey gym, he had the whole like just the swing and everything. He had both swings to himself. Right. And Hashima was just like, bro, let me let me in. Wait, what is my turn? <laughs> yeah. But now maybe Hashima can start. And because like we had us from the other day. When Hashimo gets started, Hashimo goes in. All right, now just going to be able to get something started here. I actually opted off the, the Adachi round start. Did work out for him, and now we're going to get the, the setup situation with the BZO9. Empty low, very good stuff. It's just not even when to play around the burst. Get the Oki situation. Weiss is on half-life double overhead. He's going to try to play around the burst as well as he can, but it is like that double jump area. It is very difficult to punish a lot of bursts in that sort of situation. Run up Raging Lion for that overhead. Woo. Yeah, Hajima just can't get out of the pressure. Just locked down in this corner. We've been playing so much this game on the right side of the screen. This two Hashimo's detriment. Cross, slash. Is the Super Soul Master seen it twice? No. Oh, yeah, and opting for the single overhead and going for the throw. Like, there's so many options that you can present. Oh, no, with the unfortunate drop, because you cannot link the 5 feet 5 feet like that, at least very easily. Nice use of the anti-air, get a jail down, the DP does come out. Now Hashimo is down to the white. Yeah, this, maybe the cosplay power-up could come in handy, but even that's not going to be enough. Dante finding that snipe showing off the... That clean Adachi routes. Optimal. Actually, optimal. I think that was enough of it. Like, I want to say the damage difference on, like, doing that compared to just going straight into the cross slash made the difference there. That. That's just very good awareness on Dante's side. Going right back into it. Oh, my goodness. Like, Ooh. this is, like, this Hashima has a mountain to overcome. But we're going to see, like, I, I do believe Hashiko can, like, can overcome this. But we're going to see if that's going to be the case or if, if we're going to be on set point on the side of NA. Yeah, it's gonna take something massive. I mean, an another thing to kind of keep in touch, like in mind of the internal set count between the two. We have first two sets, but these two are like 3-0 here at the moment. Like Hashimo just can't seem to make sense of it all. All right, and now gonna get able to get the Raging Lion with all that Oki. He doesn't play nice. Oh, not, yeah, just using that, just using the assist there, just not committing all the points to play around that first. And now we're back to the mix-up situation. Nice use of the DP. Okay. Oh my gosh, the defense from Dante has been so consistently on point. Hashimo finding these opportunities to put Dante under pressure, these push blocks, and oh, okay, oh. maybe a little bit too anti there. We'll get that DP punished. This is going to be double super. Yeah, hit him with the boom, boom, boom. And you already know what falls after that. The boom, boom, pal, double supers, four bar spin, one character dead. I know you're liking the style. Hashimo. Yeah, that like Hashima, like this is definitely like it's great to obviously oh it's Adachi level like level four residents. I actually pop the residents very early because he recognizes that like in this scenario if I get any hit I can kill either character with like stray hit into Atom Smasher or stray hit into like cross slash or whatnot. So opting for this early residence, the that is gonna whip it out. Nice anti air. Oh unfortunately didn't get the land cancel. Oh my god, yeah, you can see Dante just trying to keep Hashimo under pressure, the B, Zio, does not beat out these DPs. Hashimo has been really persistent with those. Yeah, the DPs have really, like, made the difference here. And Dante is, I can't tell if he's just, like, really just wants, like, make this space against the Rapier character, or if he's just PMing. <laughs> <laughs> it, really, it is off to Dante, because he too, he does like the PM from time to time. Jeez. Oh, yeah, nice use the, the anti-air. Oh, but unfortunate drop, and now, text the throw. All right, good pressure, has to push block it out. Dante only with one bar. Hashimo does have four. And now gonna be able to try to use this black seal. It's gonna be getting some sort of either a mix-up, plus frames, same side. Thought it was gonna be the mix-up. Does Weiss, yeah, well, Hashimo catches the bar. Dante's hubris, the greed was his downfall. The Achilles heel. Oh my God, you can see that like intense cat and mouse game that was going on there. Almost like the uh, Tom and Jerry bad ending that happened. <laughs> or like the true ending of Tom and Jerry episodes that Jerry always wins. And Dante was definitely the Jerry in that situation. Just running around, as you said, almost in a playful manner. But he's Tom, like, dude, he's like, I'm so far ahead, dude. I've been like really good at like all the set so far. I could just play around a little bit. And when you play with your food, you play with the food. I don't know what the follow-up that is. Right. What was that you threw? Hello? <laughs> that was an insane throw, actually. 
All right, and now optimal Ori combos. Nice setup situation here. Yeah, yeah that is unreactable. Oh. Nice. All right, this is a sandwich situation. Nice use of the jab into the 5B active switch. That is a cross up. And now, once again, we're going to set up for that same situation. Oh, try to get him, but the EX thrust didn't have enough of uh, the cross gauge to do the assist. Double super is on the table. Oh, oh my gosh, no! mistimed! And that was off of a cross combo situation that Itachimo cannot burst any of this. This team can get extremely out of control in these situations. The cross up off the active switch, a cross slash, and Orie goes down in a matter of seconds. I'm really surprised that that, that Zeodyne hit behind Narakami. But we saw the comeback with the solo Weiss last time. This could be another situation. Nice check on the Persona. Oh, but really good positioning on that JA from Dante Thomas. Oh my gosh, Hachimo trying to keep the match in that mid-range where Weiss tend to excel. Yeah, go straight into the super, get Narakami into that like one-hit kill kind of situation. All right, checking the Adachi a little bit. Didn't have the, the meter to like really cancel into any like, super threatening, but now gonna be able to get into the electric slide. And not opting not to try to go for like a kill scenario instead, just gonna go for the mix-up. Nice Ooh. air to air! Oh, oh. oh wise poor girl! Gonna not be able to get that, that last like finishing touch there. Alright, now just down to the Adachi. Like I mean the Narcom still the throw counter. Not able to get the full combo off of very unfortunate from Hashimo. And you see Dante go for that runaway style yet again, back up against the wall. Need to be extremely careful of backing, not gonna be getting much for it. And there oh. it is, the swing! Oh, very good just contest there with the mash. Very unfortunate. That definitely was like two cases where like Hashimo felt that pressure, had just those misinputs, and it really just worked out in Dante's favor. But that was like really impressive for Hashimo. Like, dude, the first game did not like, they did not find their footing, they did not find anything. And it was like, oh, dude, we're kind of just gassing, we're not really gassing up was there. But then you can see that was like, Hashimo is very good and can really like adapt. Like, give me two, give me like 20 minutes. Right. And then I'm going to see what you did and I'm going to give you a fantastic set. Yeah, I'm with that. Like, as, as you stated before, in the initial set that we saw, it was like your exact words. We didn't get to see Hashimo play the game. Yeah. That match, we got to see Hashimo play the game. We got to see like exactly what they're able to dip into in terms of like a 1v2 comeback, how prominent their wise is, the mix ups all together. It was so great. But Dante still coming out on top, this time in a 2 1, but most significantly, putting Team North America on match point. Yup, this is any any one of these matches coming up, if NA wins, the exhibition's over, and NA proves themselves yep. overcoming Japan. Uh, which, he was like, fantastic. But on the other side, there's still, like, Japan has so many killers. And I mean, like, this lineup right now, I mean, Watasama was, like, one of the other ones that got, like, Japan on the board. It was, like, really, like, really good. And we're gonna see against Scrub. They didn't even play. Yeah, I was just gonna say, this is another run back. It was blind picks. Yep. The odds of this aren't very high, but we're gonna be having two run backs in the uh, basically round two rotation of the uh, blind pick scenario. So, I mean, when we saw a lot of Boston play, it was um, extremely overwhelming. Like, the, the Mika Carmen was just so insanely on point. Uh, Scrub not really having the answers there. So, they have picked Carmen and Hawkman. Is this something that they're walking into, or is this a button check? But I, I was saying that to say, I wouldn't be surprised if they opted for another team. I mean, I, I do actually do really agree with that. Like, in the terms, like, if Scrub wants to go for the, like, the Carmen and Hawkman, I agree with that. Like, the, the Ronda and Ruby is obviously, like, the just the pride and true, especially with that dash walk. Uh, but, like, that's definitely, like, the, the pride and true, like, team with Scrub, like, seen countless times. But Scrub does have, like you mentioned, really been working on that, that Ruby Yumi. Right. Also has always in the pocket the Buzz Lightyear Hakuman and then the Karma. Yeah. So, like, we're going to see how that's going to play out in this, like, game where, like, if they are, it looks like they did lock it in. I do like Hakuman versus Karma more. Like, with Ragna, you have some options to deal with, like, some of the projectiles. And this team's very good at, like, like the the Hawk, well, the Carmine is gonna present a lot of options, like in the projectile area. Hawkman can slash those and make the neutral very annoying. But it's also weird because Mika is an anti zoner, right? <laughs> so like it's this case of like it's this really interesting matchup that we're about to see right now with the Carmine Hawkman versus this uh, this Mika Carmine right now. Mercon set point. Let's see if Scrub can take it home or if Watasama is gonna just get another point on the board. 
far right right now. Yellow Shape Scrub starting off strong. Gonna get some life back with the full usage of that full A auto combo route. Oh my gosh! That DP active switch was insane, but that all recoverable life, so if Mika does end up in the back line, that does mean that she can get a lot of that health back. The so, button is gonna whiff. Nice check on that 4P. The counter comes through, but it doesn't auto correct, and now. Nice use of toe, and now cross combo situation. Nice. That's another thing that caught Scrub a lot was just like using those active switch button. But the parry is a really good answer to like the way Wasawa structures those like mix ups. Yeah. Very big starter. If anything at all, no matter what the result is of this game specifically, it's definitely a significant tone shift. Like Scrub has been able to really uh, dictate the pace of the matchup, almost slow it down a bit with what they're threatening with the Optimus. That's uh, changed the pace for Wadamasa. Not quite snowballing. Yeah, definitely not snowballing, but like this is definitely going much like this is going just momentum wise much slower and in Scrub's favor for now. Right. Watasama is very good at just taking that sort of situation and turning it into their advantage. Nice. I do agree with that burst. Like that was a fantastic use of that burst. Now finding just trying to get something started. Wow. And nice blocks out the DP. Having fun, I think one of the players is. This is gonna be double super. Yeah. Yes. Is that the uh, the boom boom boom? I believe if you follow up with a with a boom boom pow, you will be able to kill the Carmine down to the solo Mika. It is level four residence. The double parry does not work in that situation. The two C she just belly flop and connected. Not, I don't believe you're gonna go into the residence just yet. You do kind of want to get like a little bit more of the health back. Paco Bell gonna be able to get <laughs> something started. Okay. Oh, we saw them go for that in the previous set, dropping the uh, A Air Series intentionally to try to get an Air Reset. Scrub, mindful of that this time around, not falling for that. Yeah, and that's just definitely like just a showing of like Scrub's comfort in like this game in general. It just seeing what, like you do this once, never again. Right. Okay, Scrub needs to be a little bit careful. Although Scrub has the character advantage, a 2v1 situation, both characters' life totals aren't the highest. Yeah, this is going to be like really good situation to get started here for Scrub. Like any random hit could be really bad. You can see Scrub, they're not opting to try to get anything going with that assist. Just recognize the danger. The command throw a little late and now get, get, get everything started. Scrub is up on the board. This is set point for NA. Yes, indeed. And Oh my gosh, just the uh, story that's being said here. We've had two of these run backs, the previous one being Dante versus Hashimo. Hash, uh, Dante being able to solidify both of those set victories, but a scrub is the first one to be able to overturn on the North America set point. Truly a statement that could be made, especially with this uh, overall set count. Asia does not want to go down like this. <laughs> yeah, no, this is definitely like, you really don't want to go out on this because, like, you know, Asia's definitely like, yeah, we're we're fantastic at this. I mean, obviously, even regardless of the result, don't take that and be like, oh, NA is better than right. Asia. This is strictly for fun, and this is also just like, like, just like, it's blind pick also. Like, it's, it's there's a LOS. LOS. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's seriously, in all fairness, this is strictly for fun, and there's a lot that can be said for, like, on both sides because these sets are fantastic. Regardless. It's been a ton of great BB tag action. Cross the fades, yo fade scrub, looking oh. to tie the knot. Dude, Dude, that was so smart from Wasama. Recognizing, like, on the free strike, Hakuman's whiffing. All right, I'm going to jump out. There's nothing you can do about that. And then confirms from the stray EX wheel and going to get a nice chunk of health back. And now what's the Oki look like? Are you going to respect the parry? Oh, nice. Ooh. Two A's of Paco. Oh, not OK. Wow. Oh, I really like that decision. He was like, you know, there's probably not enough time to activate. Let me just 4P it. Yeah, and recognize that huge like blast radius of the Carmine versus the incoming. Just amazing situation. What about us bringing this back? Here it comes. Yeah, this is like really good for one of us to try to play around the DP, but no dice. Carmine's DP is huge. Oh, oh but your Carmine was exposed, brother. Boy, did you see that snipe might? Oh my gosh. Oh, nice use of the overhead. Gonna be able to get the full confirm here. And yeah, just gonna get all that little bit of life back. All right. Just patience. I'm, I am walking. Watamasa, these pickups, the Mika missile <laughs> side to side, front to back with the cross raid. Does that kill? Uh, no, not, not quite. yet. That is, that is Hakuman's health coming into play, one of the few 18k characters in this game. Nice Ooh. respect on the raid. Dude, he is just blocking. React to freeze frame. <laughs> and just said, oh, you mashed it. 
man, the lingering. Uh, oh, can you see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying he... to take it off. But yeah, the lingering uh, presence of that assist character. As so long as that character's on the screen, there's a window to where you can actually cross combo to freeze the screen, as Wadamasa did there. And doing it in such a tense scenario of like, will Scrub match? Is Scrub going to flinch? Being able to recognize that free frame in the heat of the moment, get the punish. Excellent, excellent decision there from Wadamasa. Yeah, I, like that is one thing that you like, especially in BB Tag, you do not see. You don't see somebody with like really strong poke normals like Carmine walk in front of you, down back, and say, "Okay, now." Right. And then just able to take that and tie up this current set. Guatemala is still in here. Going to be able to get a little bit of something here on the side of Scrub. And now you really want to like try to find this opening. The wheel is going to make Scrub walk a little bit. Okay, you see Guatemala really playing off the back foot here. Yo, fame Scrub. Has that Mika isolated so much? It tries to call that Mika missile, it's just no dice. Yeah, we're gonna see now just like the EX wheel is gonna come out. Oh wow, Woo! using that JBB to kind of make the, the 2C whip, and now a lot of damage here from Yo Fame Scrub. And that's a lot of health back, more importantly, actually. Okay. Nice pressure, good blocks on the, the mix of potential. The DP does come out, and now the Mika is on point. Oh my gosh, that utilizes the active switch. Watamasa trying to just get a comeback here. It's the momentum thing, like the pace of the match is really slowed down. Watamasa just can't take the fight to Scrub and get back to the snowball tendencies that we know them for. Yeah, and now Scrub getting something started here. Nice blocks, gonna be able to get something started. The bomb comes out. I know that combo. Oh wow, catching their movement though. Recognizing that's the burst point. Watamasa trying to get something started. The 6P is gonna cause a little bit of an anchor unless you're able just to jump out. The missile, no connect, and uh, oh, oh, I'm just barely not able to get the, the confirm from that 5A. A nice jump, oh my goodness. Gosh, all oh, the swings, just a precision neutral game being played for both players here. Watamasa able to find this throw, we're gonna be going into that Rampage time territory, so passive regenerating bar for both these players is oh. amazing. It could make this extremely deadly with that type of starter, that many resources on deck here for Watamasa. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be a cross combo, and then you're just able to get just that. I should just be once. No, nah, I think you're gonna have to hit him with a boom, boom, boom. Yeah, for the 18k, it's gotta be the boom, boom, pow. Hakuman going down. Solo Carmine here for Yofame Scrub. Still set point, but arguably not in an advantageous situation as Wadamasa has the isolation on the 2v1. Yeah, like it, if, even whenever you look at like these full life words, like, oh, you know, Scrub has so much life to work with here. Right. One, it's Carmine. Level four runs is Carmine, so the, the health is gonna be like plentiful, but like, Always in all these team games, having both characters, like your full team, is always more advantage. Give me a loops, brother. Give me the loops. <laughs> and some life back for Carmine. That's significant, especially off this back row. It could be the difference between life or death getting confirmed like that for Watamasa. Yeah, and you're going to be able to get the double super here. Yeah, that is... Oh, oh not able to no. get the cinematic. The 4P reached heaven. Mori's finger. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that is so unfortunate on the side of Scrub, but Watamasa taking another point for Japan does not want this exhibition to end just yet. And this is this is exactly what we wanted to ask for to try to get as many players represented in as many like unique or multiple match scenarios as possible because yeah. That was another divide that we were starting to see Yofrim Scrub make necessary adaptations, a full team swap, a full just like momentum and just overall approach uh, difference there from Scrub in order to take to Watamasa. And it definitely had a significant impact, but at the end of the day, Watamasa is still able to stay strong, stay cool, stay calm, stay collected. And in that game three, they were behind, but able to get the full comeback and able to get that game, keeping Team Asia alive. Yeah, like it was just really good. I also was like paying attention because Wadamasa, it is a, uh, it is an American uh, PS4. Right. And we had, <laughs> even in the room, we had a couple of the, the, the Japanese PS4s and we we're like, oh, it's Circle X, the X Circle. And like, yeah. just, he was getting, he, he got mixed really hard there. As he took the win, all, all of the sugars and all that. He needs like some fruit afterwards because it just, it drained there. But like, he, he, we may not see him again. Because again, this is the way with the blind picks, it's first to seven points, it is a 6v6. 
assuming we have down to the wire and we get both of these rounds done and it's a 6v6, it is that one player that could we could see. It could be whoever, whichever team says, you are the finer player, you are the finest of us all, represent us in this grand finals effectively. Yeah. Like, that could happen. But we're going to even see if that's the case because we have some killers from NA coming up and we have... Right now, it's going to be Chop Suey. We saw earlier Rocket the Izayoi Chie versus Nezu, who's now, he, he's, <laughs> is, you, like, I know, like, you know, the, the gambling rules on Twitch now is a little bit, like, is they've changed a good chunk, but like, I don't think they've banned, like, this level of, like, casino, like, spin the wheel to pick which team Nezu is going to play. Uh, we would have to like read the really in-depth terms and conditions, but I would say that they don't allocate for that type of randomness, and I can guarantee they don't uh, have a take disclosure in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just something you don't think about. Only in BB tag can yeah, we have... I don't know which slot machine has the tank on tech. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. But now we're going to see, that's going to be working out right now. So actually sticking with it for the this game, we're going to see the Adachi Blitz tank versus the Izaioichi. I really like. I really want to pick Nezu's brain on why he feels like he wants to play what team win. Like, because I mean, he has so many teams, and he's not like. I don't want to say he's like. He's not consistent in what he wants to play against. Like, if he plays against like Chop, he may play a Dodgy Blitz tank this time. He may play the Shurigane, like anything next time. Like, he will off, well, off this time swap. Even like in the sense that he was winning against players, he was just like, cool. I'm gonna swap to another team now. Right. Like winner swap, sure. Oh, unfortunately, the 5P was not going to connect. This team also for Nezu is very strong, weirdly enough. Yeah, it's like one of the better Blitz Tank teams. In terms of the overall like lockdown and some of Blitz Tank's uh, specialties is that unblockable JC. Adachi sets up for that extremely well. So these two somehow have a lot of synergy. <laughs> yeah, not only that, it's also like it's not the best Adachi team by any means, but it's definitely not a bad one. Right. Oh, and you're going to set up for the unblockable? Oh, but yeah, you're just going to, uh, yeah, you do have a parry DP, so you're going to play that around that. The flamethrower comes out. Oh, unfortunate drop on the happy birthday combo. But now the tank has lasers. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, parry. Hey. Yo, third strike? <laughs> oh my god. Third strike? Justin Wong? Whoop. Rare footage of Blitz Tank actually angry, except it's not rare at all. <laughs> he has the same expressions all the time. <laughs> he is a tank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going to be able to get this connect here on the Izai. And one of the things about Izai, if we're going to reference other games, is she's very much like, if you're familiar with Darkstalker, she's very much like Sasquatch. Uh, she's just going to give you that very hard to react with, like, short hop into, like, 50-50 sort of scenario. Nice blocks. Nice mash from Nezu. That is a dead character. Yeah, doesn't even need the boom, boom, pow. He goes for the boom, boom, boom to get the kill here. Yeah, leaving the boom, boom, pow hanging. Bring the tank back in to clean it up because the solo is you are fighting for her life. A level three resonance to work with. Chop is not going to have that in mind for now. Just trying to navigate the minefield that is this blitz tank. That's going to be massive. A happy birthday confirmation to try to even things up a bit. Yeah, and able to go for the full riser. That will kill the Adachi off the happy birthday. That is fantastic for Chop Suey. Nezu does have level 4 residents, is opting to go for it now. And one of the weird things with Izaiwe is that she doesn't really cover the normal, like, jump angles that you're going to see in a lot of these characters. So she's, like, going to have to play around this angle that, like, Blitz Tank is normally Gosh. not going to be able to, like, Look at these Blizzard. Carries. Wait, can you Astro? Oh, oh no, no, there was no Astro on deck to level 9, but could not find the proper combo confirmation. Oh, my goodness. I don't, I don't know how he gets his Astro, but with the unblockable into the laser? All right, going for another one, another one. All right, this is zoning, brother. This is cheating out here. For real. Oh my God, Nezu has just been on another level with all these parries. Nice. Finally has a mistimed one that Chapsui will be able to capitalize on and gets the overhead, that giant tank. Hurtbox taking advantage of that one. We might be on a next touch win scenario from both sides. Yeah, I know tank has a ton of health. Yeah, this is gonna be just gonna go for the normal kill. It's his 20k character is not gonna do much, but now, yeah, I really like that. Not gonna be anything, just believing Nezu is gonna opt for the gamble. And Ooh. just like that, DX teleport into the corner and got caught with the low. You can see because of the exhalation point, he was blocking that side, but he did, you could tell from that point that he was like, okay, I'm gonna block the cross up, but it's gonna be the overhead. You're gonna do the ace teleport overhead, 50 50, going to the way of the chop suey. And now on set point, like we mentioned prior. Yeah, we Whoa. have seen the situation previously. Wadamasa was able to keep Team Asia alive. Now the weight of Asia and just the longevity of the set is on Nezu's shoulder, trying to bring it back. Chop Suey looking to close this out. 
shit. Like this is very good stuff right now from Desu. Just you can just see the the like patience in terms of like recognizing. I don't need to force this and like force anything. I can just go for my parries and get something going. All right, Tomoe, and, uh, and this is such such a hard to like situation to block out. It's off to the burst. Okay. You can see Chopsumi just being extremely evasive and utilize that Izio air mobility to really mix up where they are on screen during any given time. And I mean, all things considered, Blitz Tank is an extremely competent zoner by extremely fair means. Yes. Uh, but in terms of just like the overall air control, they tend to have a lot of coverage on the ground and the air can be a little bit of a blind spot. Yeah, it's, it's that weird situation where like Blitz Tank doesn't really have, I don't believe he has that double jump and he can't really cover the situation that like Izai will present. So Blitz Tank is now out of the picture. It is down to the Adachi and Chopsui is healthy for now. This is gonna be a Adachi combo. He's gonna be able to deal like around that 7K area and just get the, the meaty, trying to bait something out. And now just Chop basically started just using that dash cancel. The 4A going to be able to get a little bit of a start here, but needs to find another hit in order to kill. Oh my gosh, Dezu under pressure right now gets the massive throw bait. So this will be two solid Adachi combos they've been able to get on both characters respectively, is what I would say. A little bit of a drop on the tail into that one. Yeah, that's just, and it's unfortunate with that, that route stability is a little goofy, but now with just using that DP punish, we do have a victor. Assuming he can keep all this clean, he keeps it all clean. We have a victor of our exhibition. 7-3 going to the way of NA, and like that, Chop Suey able to close it out for an NA. But great showing from Nezu as well as the entire Japanese team. This has been a really fun exhibition, dude. Man, it's just been such a pleasure to commentate, such a pleasure to witness, and I'm sure for the players, such a pleasure to participate in. I mean, this was just a long-awaited opportunity for North America and Asia to finally be able to go up against one another. And so to have it on this stage after a, you know, extremely grueling pandemic of just isolated uh, play and, you know, North America playing against North America establishing the way that we like to play VTAG. Yes. Asia playing against each other establishing the way that they like to play VTAG. Having that clash of ideologies come and meet and be, I mean, the final score is 7-4 or whatever it may be. Very close matches all together. Yes. Like, it's just, uh, you see the different approaches kind of come to fruition, but no side really having an extremely, like, solid footing where it's like, like exerting dominance, but in the context of this exhibition, it will be North America that rides on top. Yeah, and we definitely, one of the things I really like about this, because I mean, like, if you're familiar with the NA scene, if you're not familiar with, if you're familiar with the NA scene, I should start first, is that you, like, you're very common with all the NA players, because they enter, like, your Wednesday night fights, your, like, uh, Don Con tournaments, right. and just your various other uh, events. But, like, if you're not familiar with, like, the JP side, like, shout out to, like, uh, your Shabu. Uh, and a couple others, I forget, just apologize because I forget the names of the time, but like there's a lot of Japanese like players that will stream their uh, their events and like just show off like the community. So you should really check them out because right. these players are like fantastic. And the fact that even because obviously with Siotaku, there's like 30 some odd games or something here. And it's just very, very uh, tight knit for the scheduling. You're not going to get all these like different top like you're all the pools of the top 32 and whatnot. So just able to show off like the Japanese scene to an American audience is like Thank, thank you to the CEO of and everybody involved for, for letting this happen because this is like fantastic for the just the BB tag scene in general. I would say so, yeah, truly phenomenal. And I mean, the best part about it, this is only a taste tester. Like th yes. this was just an exhibition that we had featuring the Asian players. We're truly grateful that they were able to come out. But uh, we have an entire BB tag tournament that's happening tomorrow. It's going to be featuring all these players from North America and Asia. There's going to be plenty of opportunity to see them clash with some other faces because we also have plenty of other strong North America players here oh, that are in that bracket, you know? Yeah, it's just, it's fantastic to see. Thanks for everybody together. Thanks for you guys for tuning in. We will be having more, uh, there's more t uh, team events and different community events that are going on on, I think it's uh, Tampa Never Sleeps as well as on this channel that's going to be coming up. So make sure to check out, there's going to be the Strive Theory 3s. Stay tuned. Uh, and I think we're going to be signing off. Thanks for watching some BB Tag. And uh, how about hop on some of that rollback net play, huh? Indeed, play BB Tag, you know what it is. Stay tuned. Give me some help.